Hello everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. We've got a new group of 16 here, ready to take on the deep, dark forest on the hardest difficulty. I'm really pumped because the hardest difficulty is so much fun on the deep, dark forest. And I'm about to show you why. Let's go! Here in the deep, dark forest, the Zumbinis soon encounter the Fleens. Legends. The Fleens were once closely related to Zumbinis. So, most people, when they play through the Deep Dark Forest on the hardest difficulty, are going to faint from how difficult they are. But it's really not that bad. Alright, let's start with Fleens. Ten bucks says I won't be able to click this. Yep, can't click that. Well, basically how this changed from very hard, now any number of the Zumbini's traits might correspond to any of the Fleen traits. So, Zumini hair might correspond to Fleen feet, Zumbini noses might correspond to Fleen eyes, Zumbini feet may correspond to Fleen hair, like literally anything goes. So that's going to make this pretty challenging, but honestly it's not really any more challenging than very hard. So, looking at this... This fleen shares a nose of that fleen. This fleen shares hair with that fleen. And they sh these two share tires. So I'm going to just start by... Oh, hang on a second. We've got this guy, and we've got this guy, who only differ by one trait. If we can find the fleens that also only differ by... Yep, those two. This fleen and this fleen also differ by only one trait. And same with that one and that one. So we won't choose one of them. Let's choose this guy. Oh, wow, that was super lucky. Okay. So basically, instead of looking at the flames and, and the Zubinis and saying, alright, this the next Zubini I put out has to have the same color nose as this guy, just say, this next Zubini I put out needs to have one feature in common with this flame for one of those flames. And one trait in common could correspond to any number of those flames, which is interesting. Also, I'm guessing, since these two guys differ by one trait, I'm wondering if there's another Zumbini that also only differs by one trait out of those. It's not him, he differs by two. Huh. I'm not sure. Alright, well, this guy's got an orange nose, but different everything else. Let's try him. Okay! Wow! I got really lucky there. <laughs> so now let's use logic to try to figure it out. So we now know Zumbini noses correspond to fleen feet. So, keeping it in mind, this fleen has brown boots. There are one, two, three, four, five fleens with brown boots. So we need to find Zumbinis that have five of one kind of nose that's not orange. So we've got one, two, three with green noses, one, two, three, four with red noses, one, two, three, four, five with blue noses. Alright, so that guy is going to require a blue nose Zumbini with one thing in common with this Zumbini and one thing in common with that Zumbini. So looking at it, that could be the Zumbini because it has roller skates like this Zumbini and glasses like that one, so that's definitely a possibility. Can't be her. Uh, cannot be him. Uh, can't be him. Can't be him. All right, it's gonna it's gonna be her. Wow, a perfect, very, very hard flames. That requires luck to <laughs> get. But I still have three more guesses. So, yay, we get to see well the scissors. Done. Woohoo! So the fleens can be very intimidating on the very, very hard difficulty, but I'll get more into my deep, devious strategies when I go over the individual puzzles videos. Alright, it's time for one of my favorites. Having foiled the fleens, the Zumbinis journey on through the forest. There are rumors in these parts of a musical innkeeper. So most people think that this is arguably the hardest puzzle in the game. No, it's not even as hard as the last difficulty. It, it'll make you faint, though, when you see it. <laughs> Look at all those rooms! Guess what? We're going on tour. 
But thanks to you and your cousins, this place has grown. You are too much. Mwah! Can't drop down right now, but have fun. It's better than having none. So right off the bat, you don't even see a clock, but there is a clock there. Yeah, that's 125 rooms now. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Hotel Dementia, level 4. After a long journey, the Zumbinis need rooms to stay in overnight. However, only Zumbinis with free features in common, such as red noses, ponytail hair, and sunglasses, can room together. One feature tells you a Zumbini's placement by four, row. One feature tells you the placement by tree trunk, column, and one by door location on the same floor of that same tree trunk. Zumbinis in the same row, tree trunk, or doorway will have variations of the same attribute. For example, Zumbinis with red noses may stay on the first floor, green noses on the second, orange on the third, and so on. At the same time, Zumbinis with ponytails may stay in the first tree trunk, flat top in the second, shaggy in the third, and so on. Finally, Zubinis with sunglasses may be able to stay in the first doorway, sleepy eyes in the second, glasses in the third, of doorway of the same floor of the same trunk, and so on. So yeah, free traits in common. So I basically think of it as there are rows, there are columns, and then there are tree trunks. That's how I think of it. And the best way to start this, find two Zumbinis that have three features in common. So that guy and that guy. And put one of them in this place right here. Now let's try to put him in the same room. That will fail most of the time. So now let's try putting him in the door right next to him. That also failed. Alright, now let's put him in the door right beneath him. Okay! So, Zumbinis with green noses can stay in the first row, Zumbinis with blue noses can stay in the second floor, or the second row. That's good to know. So now we need to figure out where the other attributes will go. So, let's see. Let's see if we can room this guy over here. He can. All right. So this will either determine hair or feet. The column will determine hair or feet. We need more. We need to investigate this a bit more. So going off this, this means sunglasses can stay in the first tree trunk and then other eyes in the next tree trunk. So let's try putting her right here. That did not work. Okay. So it looks to be... Okay, because that failed, that told me that hair was important. Because if she, if hair was not important, she would be able to go there because she had blue nose and roar, uh, skates and just a different thing of eyes. So we now know that feet do not matter in the long run of things. So really, Zumbinis with the same hair eyes and nose can room together. Zumbinis with the same nose can be on the same row. <laughs> Zumbinis with the same hair can be in the same column. And Zumbinis with the same eyes can be in the same tree trunk. So now that we know that, the rest of the puzzle should be pretty darn easy. So we've got this lady here. She's got a blue nose and she's got glasses. So blue nose means second floor. Glasses means second tree trunk. And then green hat hair means that she'll have to go into the next column because we don't have green hat hair as a column yet. Now this guy, he's got a blue nose, so second row. He has a cyclops eye, but, which means he'll need a new tree trunk. And then he's got spiky hair. We don't have any Zumbinis with spiky hair set, so he has to go into the last column. So as of now, we have set. Bowl cuts go in the first column. Bald heads go in the second column. Ponytails go in the third column. Green hat hair goes in the fourth column. Spiky hair goes in the fifth column. Excellent. Let's wrap up the green noses now. He's got a green nose. He's got normal eyes. So he goes in the next tree trunk because we don't have a tree trunk specified for normal eyed guys yet. And he's got spiky hair. So last column. She has a green nose. So top row. She's got sleepy eyes, which means we don't have a sleepy eyed tree trunk yet. So she goes into the final tree trunk. And then she's got green hat hair. So she goes in the fourth column. Excellent. Oh, we have no purple nose guys. All right. So now we'll take him. He's got a red nose, so we don't have a red nose row yet. So he'll go down here in the third row. We haven't specified yet. He has sleepy eyes, so he's going to go on the last tree trunk. And then he's got a bald tuft, so he goes in the second column. This guy is the same, except he's got normal eyes, so he'll go right there. Normal eyes, red nose, spiky hair. Sleepy eyes, red nose, bowl cut. All right, Cyclops, orange nose, spiky hair. Cyclops, orange nose, spiky hair, he'll stay in the same room. 
Glasses, orange nose, spiky hair. Normal eyes, orange nose, bowl cut. So that one's really not that hard, honestly. Once you get the logic down for the second, or the oh-so-hard puzzle, this one's really just adding another dimension to that, and it's quite easy, honestly. The Really, the key thing is just finding two Zumbinis at the beginning that have three traits in common. 99% of the time, you'll have two Zumbinis with three traits in common, from what I've found. And then, that's really easy to just find the first detail difference, so it was very quick for us to find that noses determined row, and then after that it was pretty easy to find where the other two went. Very nice. I love that puzzle. I don't care what anybody says. That is a great puzzle. That's also way easier than the last difficulty, because there's no random chance involved. Strike the targets one and all, and watch for a pattern on Mudball Wall. This is the one I'm worried about, because this is the most legitimately difficult one in the bunch. And it comes last. So this basically combines the hardest parts of the last two difficulties of the level. Mudball Wall, level 4. The Zumbinis need your help in getting over the wall to freedom. Using the Mudball Launcher, hit the sections of the wall with dots in them. The color, shape, and color of the shape tells you what section it will hit, but be aware that the pattern that reveals where the Mudball hits will shift diagonally on the Mudball Wall. To help you organize, divide the wall into five columns, each five squares wide. It's the same deal as uh, the last difficulty, except now it shifts diagonally like in the second difficulty. So, let's start by firing the Mudball. Alright, let's change the color of the shape to red. Alright, so it looks like color, green colored shapes will go in this, uh, the second row, and red colored shapes will go in the last row. It looks like it. So by that logic, let's try... Color blue shape. Green mud ball. Alright. Purple mud balls will go in this part of the wall. Green mud balls will go in this part of the wall. Excellent. So now, here's the thing. As we change the shape, the shape and the color of the shape are going to alternate diagonally, essentially. Like on the second difficulty. So that's fun. However, we do know part of the pattern, which is good. So we know that the pattern of color of shape going down goes something, green, something, blue, red. That's helpful to know. So I'm going to try to hit one of those two, and I'm going to try that by changing the shape to square and making it color green. So hopefully it'll hit right there or right there. Nope. That did not work. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. I'm trying to think where to fire next. So everything in here will be green, so we do want a green mud ball. Everything up here are going to be squares. Everything here will be diamonds, so we need to change the uh, the shape. Let's change it to triangle. And then once again, we'll fire a green color. Yeah! Ow! Excellent. So now let's try a circle with color red. Well, that works. That was not where I was aiming, but that works. <laughs> that also means the one shape we haven't tried, which is star, is always going to fire in the middle column. And because we know red comes horizontally after green, we know a red shape is going to shoot right there. Right, we're finding the pattern. The nice thing is on the highest difficulty, you've got a lot of mud to work with. 
Oh, All right. Yeah. So we got one last green mud ball to hit uh, to shoot into that pig right there. It's going to be a star because stars are in the middle column. Two up from red. If we go here, we know that's blue. We don't know what that is. So it's a 50-50 shot, either orange or purple. I like purple a little better than orange, so let's try that. Boom! Bingo! So now let's try to hit that one. So we know it's going to be a star because it's in the middle of that column of that section of the wall. We know that one up from red is going to be blue since we've got the red here in the leftmost <laughs> column. Bottom row is red. And then here, leftmost column, second to bottom row is blue. It's so color blue. Now we need to just choose the color. I'm going to choose red. Nope, that's shooting. All right, that's fine. Let's try a purple mud ball now. No, we tried purple mud ball. Let's try a blue mud ball. All right. So the one orange mud ball will actually shoot there. That's okay, though. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the mud ball blue. Actually, no, we can shoot that there. Purple mud ball. Stars in the middle. And then right there, that is the color red. Because we saw a red mud ball at or a red colored shaped mud ball that was a star right there, it smack dab in that place on a different section of the wall. So it's going to be in the same place on this section of the wall, provided you make it that section of the wall's color. So now the rest of the other two mud balls that we need to shoot there are all going to be blue. They're both in the fourth column, so they're both going to be square. One to the right from red, and also one down from green. Now, one down from green is going to be tricky because we know that's going to be red. One up from red is blue. We also know from here, one up from blue is purple. And then one up from purple is green. So we actually know one down from green is going to be purple. So that means blue mud boss hitting this section of the wall. Square is hitting this column. And then because we know that in the fourth column, right here is green based on what we have in this section of the wall. We need the pa pattern one down vertically from green. And putting all this stuff together, we can determine that that's purple. Right there. So then, same section of the wall, just shooting it one down from purple, which we know logically is blue. So blue mud ball, square, blue square. It's going to shoot in that last spot. Hey, we actually had a decent bit of mud left to spare. You got them all through. Good for you. Yay. <laughs>